What's up, Gender guys? Brian here, D3, Top List Game here to share with you. I know one of my requested top list videos to share with you guys today. With well, this particular video, uh, just kind of continue the trend of sharing some of my all time favorite games on some of my favorite platforms or consoles. This particular one, I'll be actually going over one of my favorite Nintendo consoles of all time in the form of Super Nintendo. Now, this particular list was requested by one of my viewers going by the name of Vamp, I think it's Vampire or Vampiria A, and he wanted me to share my top 10 favorite Super Nintendo games of all time. So, that's what we're going to do. So, if you enjoyed this video by the end, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to track me on my future videos. And remember, if you guys have any ideas for future tier list rankings or top list rankings or discussion videos just general video ideas in general let me know in the comments down below and i will try to get them up as soon as i can so starting off with number 10 on my top 10 favorite super nintendo games of all time is one of my all-time favorite fighting games of all time in the form of power rangers tournament fighter um i personally believe personally i think that the 16-bit era was probably the best at least in my personal opinion of fighting games in terms of overall quality across multiple different franchises uh this one was really really good it's pretty much a pretty standard fighter in terms of having a number of you know monsters you would have seen during the mighty morphin era and megazords that pretty i think it has like almost all of them except maybe one i think there's one megazord that isn't in that uh, and it's just a pretty 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 consistent looking fighting game uh i love it i would challenge it i would take anyone on in this game if they challenged me um and it's a pretty good game to just kind of pick up and start enjoying and i think when it comes to fighting games that's what you want i mean there's some players that want a much more technical game like more like you know modern fighting games but heck i like a fighting game that i can just get up pick up play with a friend or a perfect stranger and just have a good time and this consistently can do that which is why it's number 10 on my list going into number nine i have donkey kong country um i think this was a great alternative to the super mario games or technically the primary one that i'm sure will appear out later on this list um i didn't really get a chance to play the sequels because i know they released a second and a third one after this one but i do remember playing this one a lot with my cousin when he would come over and bring his super nintendo because it was the first primary console i never actually played um and it was just a fun game it's a great platformer uh good with challenges you definitely gotta get together and the thing i love about older style games is that those that was the period of time where you actually had to get better at a game in order to progress now it isn't like modern games where you can actually just they're meant to be beaten. And i that's the one thing I appreciate about the 16-bit era. I think that was kind of the peak point where you actually had to get better to progress in a game. And this is a key example of that. And I think platformers more than any other franchise or technically genre, I should say, were able to do that. And Donkey Kong Country was a key game to pull that off, which is why it's number nine on my list. Going into number eight, another pretty outstanding platformer that I don't think gets enough attention or respect that it deserves. And that is in the form of Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures. This is a fantastic platform action game, um, and it it's great in the sense that it actually plays through the primary trilogy of the Indiana Jones films in the form of Temple of Doom, which is part of my personal favorite, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and The Last Crusade. Um, there's also a number of key moments from the film that they recreate in game form and i think that's a great thing that we uh, that we that we've needed for some time i've heard that they're planning on making another indiana jones game um i'm not sure if it'll be successful or how many indiana jones games there currently are but i would say that in terms of enjoyment and standards this is still the best one by far which is why it's number eight on my list going into number seven i have super mario rpg this is a game i was enjoying kind of slightly before my overall enjoyment of jrpgs would become really permanently established um but the idea of playing a, a mario game and rpg in style was a uh, was certainly an interesting experience it was something i actually had to come back to once i discovered it existed um and it's it was for its game it's a fun game um but i will say this openly i i do enjoy the the much more updated version that they recently released on the switch i've been having a blast with that game i've already beaten it like two times and I would say the original, in many cases, still holds up and is still a pretty fun, well-made, and enjoyable game that I would recommend that anyone who's curious and wanting to play it should do it. So yeah, that's why it's number seven on my list. Going into number six is probably one of the best Super Mario games of all time in the form of Super Mario World. This is pretty much a amped up version of the classic Mario games that came out on the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And this pretty much has everything you could ask for. It's got several different worlds with several different themes. You can play with a friend or against each other. You can team up and play as Mario and Luigi. Uh, it's got a several number of extremely iconic power-ups. It's got some pretty challenging boss fights. It can get very, very difficult in the later world. 
it's almost it's really to this you could say by many standards it is a perfect mario game everything you could ever ask for everything you ever needed in a mario game this game has primary difference is heck it's in six bit it looks great it has great music it's iconic it's still to the day probably one of the greatest mario games ever played and heck that's why it's well deserving if you get space on my list. Going into number five is one of the most iconic JRPGs of all time. And this is definitely something that I didn't play when it first came out, but I did eventually have to go back once I discovered it existed in the form of Chrono Trigger. There are even some people who consider this to be their all time favorite JRPGs of all time. And I perfectly understand why. This is probably one of the most iconic JRPG franchises outside of Final Fantasy that came out during that period, and there, there's almost nothing you can really complain about. I mean, it has an incredible story with an iconic cast of characters, fantastic music, great combat system, great exploration elements, everything you could ask for in a JRPG during a 16-bit era, Chrono Trigger has. And I would say in some cases, it actually surpasses a number of the older style Final Fantasy games. Not all of them, but certainly most of them, which is why it's number five on my list. Going into number four, we are going to venture into my all-time favorite fighting game franchise of all time in the form of Mortal Kombat. But which Mortal Kombat in general could it be? It just so happens to be Mortal Kombat 2 which was actually the very first Mortal Kombat game I actually ever played. It wasn't until a little bit later when I was older, I actually went back and played the first Mortal Kombat game and then you know, Mortal Kombat 3 and then 4 and 5 and, and the list goes on. Um, but uh, this was just a fantastic fighting game. I think even back then, Mortal Kombat had always been a consistently great fighting game. Everything that you enjoyed in the first game, they certainly amped it up. And although they did kind of make improvements in the third game, there were just a couple things I think, you know, just kind of just hindered it only slightly. Well, I think Mortal Kombat 2 is like the perfect balance of, you know, the things that worked in 1 and the things that they added in some things that they were doing in 3 and just kind of put them in together. So, yeah, Mortal Kombat 2. Um, I don't have too many bad things to say. It had a solid roster. It in increased the roster. The mechanics were much more improved upon. The visuals were much more improved upon. It was just an overall superior version of the first Mortal Kombat game that came out years before. So, and it's still one of my all-time favorite Mortal Kombat games of all time. I would easily put it in the top 5 and, uh, and it might... Yeah, it's still a top five Mortal Kombat game of all time. So, yeah, that's why it's uh, number four on my list. Going into number three, and the competition is really about to start to r really crank up. And taking a number third spot is going to have to go to a game that, to this day, is by far my favorite platformer game on the 16-bit era of all time. And that is in the form of Super Castlevania IV. Why they haven't re-released this or tried to make an updated version of this game, I don't know. But, yeah, this is easily probably the best maybe ooh, I'm not sure if I want to give it that title that's tough because I've only played like three Castlevania games and they've all been like awesome games in the forms of Super Castlevania 4 Symphony of the Night and Lords of Shadows the first one those are the only ones I've ever actually played um but I think when it comes to platformers this is definitely the goat of them um it had everything you could ask for I mean combat was great expert it it Map environments were, were, were fantastic. The music was great. The boss fights were challenging, but they weren't too challenging. They wouldn't make you want to rip your hair out. Although I was a kid, I didn't have too much hair to begin with at that at that time. I think there were even some elements and certain levels that used 3D elements that you didn't really see too much during the 16-bit era. So it was very innovative in that time, and it was definitely ahead of its time in a number of key elements. Um, I just think that it was just a fantastic game. It was, I, I love this game. I always like to go back and replay it any chance I get. So, uh, yeah, I got to give the number three spot to Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4 uh, for the Super Nintendo. Taking the number two spot is going to have to go to my all-time favorite Legend of Zelda game of all time in the form of Link to the Past. I'm going to be honest. I am not the biggest fan of Zelda. I have not played a Zelda game in probably almost 20, yeah, definitely 20 years. And there's only three Zelda games I've ever actually played. And that is Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, and Link to the Past. And this is easily probably the one I've spent the most amount of time. I absolutely love this, the top-down style of Zelda games. I've not, I don't even know what, the, what these recent Zelda games have done, but it's probably not all that fun. At least it wouldn't be to me. But I, I do prefer this particular style of Zelda games. It was challenging. It was had a great amount of exploration. You had to figure out where to go. That way it allowed you to do a lot of exploring. I thought the combat was very, very simple. I thought the boss fights were very, very diverse and challenging. I thought the story was very, very well told. So much that a child could understand because I was playing this as a kid. And if, if you do happen to beat it by the end, which, heck, I certainly have beaten this game on multiple occasions, it is very, very satisfying to beat Ganon at the end and, uh, you know, save Princess Zelda and save time and, I guess, the 
the Triforce, I should say. But yeah, it, Links to the Past, still my, my favorite Zelda game of all time, even though I haven't played too many. But it takes the number two spot on my list. All right, take the number one spot. And we have to venture into my favorite personal genre of all time in the form of JRPGs and my favorite RPG franchise of all time in the form of Final Fantasy. But without question, my favorite Super Nintendo game of all time has been and will always be Final Fantasy VI, which to this day is still a top five favorite Final Fantasy game of all time, even by today's standards. This is the pinnacle of 16-bit JRPGs. Chrono Trigger was iconic, but uh, I'm sorry. Final Fantasy 16 takes six <laughs> takes a dump on Chrono Trigger in every single department. The only flaw I have with this game is it, just, it has perhaps too many characters. But I think the story of Terra and trying to figure out who she is and Magitek and Espers and just so many things and Kefka being one of the most iconic villains of all time who actually succeeds in his evil plan it's it's just it's it's just an iconic game i mean not just for JRPGs but final fantasy in general it was it 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 probably was the game that sort of ignited my personal love for final fantasy it was 7 that really solidified it but i think it really kind of started the process from six if it wasn't for six i probably wouldn't have even been interested in testing out final fantasy 7 when it was released for the playstation 7 as release title so honestly although seven takes that role it might have been six that kind of started the process i think so it kind of makes it next to final fantasy 7 probably the second most important video game i've ever actually played and that's that's a pretty big title, and it's it still holds up. I'm actually surprised they haven't tried to like do an updated version of this. I mean, I know they tried to do something with it with with with, with its visuals on like a certain device. I can't remember what it was, but I I would be more than happy to play an updated version of this. Like, I'll even go so far as to say this: I would I would actually support a remake for this. I think a remake for this with like high end quality cutscenes and voice acting, I think Final Fantasy VI, VI could really benefit from that, which is why it's my favorite Super Nintendo game of all time. So now that you guys know my list, I would love to know what are some of your favorite Super Nintendo games that you've ever played. Let me know in the comments down below. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I'll see you next time.